what, what the haters talking about. What's up, family? 70s megastar and good times actor Jimmy Walker, a.k.a. JJ, a.k.a. Kid Dino Mike, has fixed his mouth to say that he agrees with Donald Trump 90% of the time. He also clarified that statement with Massa by saying, I'm not saying I'm against Trump, but he makes mistakes too. He went on to say this, there's not one positive Trump joke out there. No president has been attacked in recent years because you couldn't attack Barack Obama because he was black, but Trump. They have come out guns blazing against him. But even though I don't like everything he does, why heck darn it, I think he deserves some sort of praise. But you can't say that in Hollywood. Elaborating on his political views, JJ said that, <laughs> said that Reagan was a good president. Everybody knows that Reagan was trash. His family knows he was trash. He was one of the worst. You don't have to take my word for it. Look up his civil rights record. See, if you really want to know how well a president did, look at their civil rights record. That'll tell you everything you need to know. So let's look at Franklin D. Roosevelt's record. Let's look at his civil rights record. Since JJ says that that's his favorite president of all. This guy, Franklin D. Roosevelt, signed an executive order to create the Fair Employment Practice Committee and to prevent discrimination or bring an end to discrimination in government agencies, including the armed forces. Now, the Marines and the Navy figured out a way to evade the order. The Marines were all white until 1942. In September of 1942, Eleanor, President uh, Roosevelt's wife, encouraged him to meet with a delegation of black leaders. These black leaders demanded full integration into the armed forces, including the right to uh, engage in combat. Roosevelt agreed, in theory, but not principle, because he never followed through. He never uh, implemented his promises. He left that up to Harry S. Truman, his successor, to fully uh, desegregate the armed forces. So this is the kind of dude that JJ, Jimmy Walker, looks up to. These kind of people he admired. That tells you a whole lot about a person. Look at the people who they admire, the people who they look up to, the people who they want to uh, emulate, the people who brightens them, gets them excited. Watch them. Watch those people. That'll tell you everything you need to know about a person. When you look at a person who still, after all the things that you've seen Steve Harvey do, and you see a person that's still riding with Steve Harvey, that's, and I don't care what their color is. It doesn't matter what their ethnicity is. If you see somebody riding with Steve Harvey, you know what they're about. They're trash. Real talk, especially if they're black. You see somebody riding with Stacey Dash, Charles Barkley, making excuses for Ray... What's his name that used to play for the Ravens, the coon, the super coon, uh, Ray Lewis. 
making excuses for these people and still riding with them after all this time, after all of the negative things that they've said and after all the times they've thrown the black community under the bus. You still, you black, you still ride with them, especially your mental case. Now, Fox News, they love exploiting self-hating black folks. I mean, and they find them. Anytime I know somebody black finna go on Fox News, I already know what it's about because normally, not all the time, but normally, Fox News is going to bring somebody on, a black person on, who they've already flipped. They already know what they're going to say because their goal is to say, see, we're not only we're not the only ones who think like that. Look, here's a cotton picking ninny right here who thinks the same way. Here's a jigaboo who thinks the same way. So it's not just us. Look at him. He's saying the same thing. Look at her. She's saying the same thing. I hate doing this video, man, because Good Times is one of my favorite shows of all time. That is one of my absolute favorite shows. And I tell you, watching that show really shaped a lot of, of who I am as a person. It really uh, ingrained a lot of convictions that I have. And let's get past the, the buffoonery. Let's get past the slapstick comedy that J.J. was known to do. Let's get past that. I watched the show because it was so beautiful, man, watching black love. See, and it spoke to me because I was in the hood. I was in the ghetto and I knew what it was like to struggle. I understood struggle. I understood pain. I understood not having it, being underserved, being underprivileged, being disadvantaged. I understood that. And that they... Watching them on television spoke to me. What I did not understand is having a loving father in the house who protected the house, even though he struggled. See, the thing about that show, it showed you that you could have struggle and you could still love each other and still stick together and still be motivated to do better. See, those were the lessons I was learning. Those were the lessons I was picking up. I was picking up on how to be a man, how to love your family and protect your family. Ain't got nothing to do with how much money you got. James Evans protected his family even though they didn't have a lot. He protected his family more than some people who have everything. Some of these people got a whole bunch of money, and I'm talking about loads of money, and their kids are on dope. They got a lot of money, and their kids are committing suicide. They got a lot of money, and the kids are out doing all kind of crazy things. Their kids are gone. Some of their kids become killers. Some of these kids who grow up with everything, they become killers, serial killers. And those kids were all sound, body, soul. Even with J.J. and all the clowning and whatever, the role that he played was a caring brother, a loving son. And he had hopes and dreams and aspirations as an artist. I can relate to that. So I just hate to do this video because of that reason. It tarnishes that image that I have of my all-time favorite show. I hate that. I hate that, man. Every time I look at that show now, I'm looking at a bona fide coon. Because this is dude right here that lays up with a career racist. 
Ann Coulter. That's his chick. They've been trying to deny the whole hookup and everything, but they're together. And just two of the ugliest people on the planet, too, by the way. Both of them super ugly. Whoo, boy. Lord, have mercy on any children that they may have. Oh, Lord. John Amos once did an interview where he cited his reason for leaving the show as being tired of the shucking and jiving. It's sad to say, man, but after all of these years, all of these years, J.J. is still shucking and jiving, kissing up the Donald Trump of all people. Let me tell you something, jive turkey. If Donald Trump was sitting on the toilet stool, taking a dump, and he ran out of toilet paper, he wouldn't even give you the privilege of fetching some more for him. That's how much he likes you and appreciates your support. JJ, there will be no good times under Donald Trump. Get that through your head. You need to know that. No more talk. What, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. Order, Texas.